Okay, how do you achieve success? When answering a question, it's important that one, all the terms in the question are clearly defined, and two, an answer to the question can help determine immediate actions one can take. So, to answer the question of how to be successful, it's important to know exactly what success entails to you. It is believed by many around you that achieving success is a fantasy to those who lack certain privileges, financial resources, or other widely accepted determinants of achievement. They attribute success to requiring a good college education, a good family background, and the right opportunities. For many other misguided views of success, these are necessary, but only because their perception of success is based on outdated ideas of commonplace careers. They believe success involves only making lots of money and retiring early, believing these to be the things that will bring them lasting happiness. Often, they are willing to sacrifice potentially the best years of their life to endure painful amounts of studying for a career requiring over 80 hours of work per week, all for the sake of money, and at the cost of what truly matters to them. This was what you planned to do at one point, and you probably are capable enough to pull it off, but after realizing this was not what you wanted, you put aside your ideas of becoming a lawyer or doctor and looked elsewhere. Instead, success can be thought of as making enough money to do all the things you want to do and be all the things you want to be. For some people, this does not involve becoming enormously wealthy. But for even you, who believes it does, many of the privileges that are accepted to be necessary for success can be helpful but are often not required. A prime example of this is Johnny Kim. He managed to become a Navy Lieutenant Commander, Medical Physician, and NASA Astronaut, the perfect Asian son. However, he did not come from the wealthy background one might expect from someone who has achieved so much. Instead, he grew up under an abusive household where his father threatened his mom with a gun and smashed his head in with a dumbbell, until his father was later killed by police. Similarly, David Goggins, the motivational speaker, became a Navy SEAL, ultramarathoner, and best-selling author, despite his incredibly poor circumstances. His father was unimaginably abusive, and after running away with his mother, he had to live through poverty, immense amounts of racism, and nearly fatal health conditions to be where he is now. They are not who you are trying to become, but they serve as examples to help you ingrain into yourself that circumstances worse than many of us can even imagine can be overcome to become successful. A further misconception regarding success is that it requires a good education and often large sums of money to pay for college tuition. This is again incorrect. Most others take for granted and fail to realize how much information is publicly available today, believing that getting a degree is the only way to obtain the information and qualifications necessary for success. The immense wealth of information accessible through the internet now offers more educational content than one can consume in a lifetime. The most successful individuals are easily accessible through free podcasts, interviews, and audiobooks. There are more books, ebooks, and online courses on every topic than ever before, each containing the findings of some of the most knowledgeable people in the world. Today, anything can be learned by anyone. Because of this, the most lucrative careers and businesses do not require a college education. Anyone can start their own business or agency without even any necessary upfront investment. Iman Gaji, a high school dropout, took advantage of these vast sums of knowledge and the changing economy to become a millionaire before the age of 18 by building his own advertising agency from scratch. He is one of the many rapidly increasing young entrepreneurs, twice as successful as the majority of CEOs and business owners in half their age, all without having to sacrifice their youth on work. They simply took advantage of the modern circumstances and widely available resources to fulfill their dreams. Anyone can become successful. The prerequisites are not some amount of capital, free time, Ivy League education, or even willingness to work hard. Rather, a well-defined perception of what success means to you is the only thing necessary to achieve it. In the book Start With Why, Simon Sinek argues that one has to be immensely clear about not only what they want, but why they want it in order to achieve their goals. Otherwise, they are simply achieving for the sake of achieving and can achieve all the material things they think will make them happy 
but still end up unfulfilled. So the first step is to figure out why you do anything in life. What gives you enjoyment and fulfillment? What is your end goal? And what should be the motivating factor behind all of your decisions? The successes of countless people around, across history can be attributed to their understanding of their own why and being able to clearly articulate it. What differentiated Steve Jobs from the countless other technology companies in the late 20th century, Walmart from the countless other cheap retail stores, and the Wright brothers from the countless other engineers attempting to achieve man flight is their ability to inspire others through their clear passion and purpose for doing what they do. Apple wanted to give them common man the tools necessary to challenge any corporation. Sam Walton, before he died, believed in serving others to the best of his company's abilities, and now, after he is gone, the company is scandal-ridden after losing sight of its original purpose. And the Wright brothers, without any college education and funded by the proceeds of their bike shop, dreamed of what the world could be if flying machines were commonplace, allowing them to beat Samuel Langley's team full of the world's best engineers and lavishly funded by the government, attempting flight at the same time. With a clear sense of purpose and direction, the amount anyone, regardless of background, can accomplish is astonishing. There's a famous quote by Friedrich Nietzsche that encapsulates this perfectly. He who has a why to live can bear almost any how. The issue is that as modern technology is increasing the number of opportunities available that allow people to achieve whatever they want, less and less people are actually clear on what it is that they truly want and end up using these opportunities for the wrong goals or not using them at all. What's worse is that the blame is often shifted onto situational disadvantages that act as a scapegoat for lack of success. These disadvantages are no doubt real and no doubt more prevalent in certain people than others, but unimaginably harsh circumstances can and have been overcome by many to achieve success, simply by finding a clear definition of what success means to them, which anyone is capable of doing. It's not fair but it is doable. Not only are more and more people striving for achievements that do not correspond with their why, oftentimes these individuals sacrifice large chunks of their lives and during brutal 80 plus hours work weeks, believing it to be the only way of reaching what they think they want. At one point, hard work may have been the only path towards success, but this is far from the case now. Being overwhelmed can even be just as unproductive as doing nothing at all. Instead, the focus should be placed on being effective. The Pareto distribution, a principle that is eerily present in nearly all aspects of life, entails that 20% of sources are responsible for 80% of outcomes. 20% of Pareto's pea pods are responsible for 80% of his peas. 20% of people are responsible for 80% of a nation's wealth. 20% of clients are responsible for 80% of a company's profits. At the same time, 20% of what you do is likely responsible for 80% of your desired results. Therefore, spending time disproportionately on this 20% is one way of maximizing your efforts to be productive towards achieving your dreams. According to Tim Ferriss in The 4-Hour Workweek, being busy is a form of laziness, lazy thinking, and indiscriminate action. The amount of time you work matters much less than how you spend your time working. Beyond the quality of the tasks you decide to prioritize, the quality of how you approach those tasks is also significant. In the book Deep Work by Cal Newport, he argues that deep, focused work is decreasing in prevalence but increasing in necessity as it allows one to efficiently learn complex things as well as produce high quality work. To take advantage of this, one must limit the amount of shallow work and distractions they spend their time on as well as train themselves to be able to go into periods of intense focus quickly. This will dramatically increase the enjoyability, effectiveness, and quality of what anyone can accomplish. These represent the first of a plethora of methods that can be used to maximize one's work and productivity. This illustrates how success is not only realistically attainable by anyone, but can be reasonably achieved without devoting oneself purely to working and suffering through obscene weekly hours. Finally. Another fixable barrier of many individuals from achieving success is their misconceptions regarding the amount of time before their dreams are realized. Plenty of people are convinced that this is a process that occurs overnight or in a year at most. This is sometimes the case, but much more often, success is the result of consistent, deliberately structured efforts over the course of many years. James Clear, author of Atomic Habits, points out if you get better 1% each day for one year, 
you'll end up 37 times better by the time you're done. This is why small choices don't make much of a difference at the time, but add up over the long term. This effect can be taken advantage of to achieve one's goals if proper habits are built gradually over time and beneficial changes are being made daily. Imagine being 37 times better at drawing, being 37 times more charismatic, or being 37 times more knowledgeable about yourself and what gives you fulfillment. All of this is possible through just 1% a day. You're able to keep it up for a year. Due to this, it is not only vital to be temporarily effective in what you do, it is something that must be maintained in order to achieve success. Similarly, Darren Hardy in his book, The Compound Effect, greatly emphasizes the importance of consistency as a means of generating momentum through small, seemingly insignificant everyday decisions. Again, time allows the effects of these decisions to compound, an effect that can be taken advantage of by everyone in pursuing success. With enough time and consistency, the starting points and disadvantages of those who have habitualized effective spending of their time are rendered completely meaningless. These individuals are infinitely more suited to achieving success than someone else in a seemingly more privileged situation, but who relies on spontaneous bouts of directionless motivation as a means of pursuing their goals. In this way, success is achievable by anyone who is consistently effective in how they work over enough time and has a clear sense of what it is that they are pursuing and why. So, what is it that you should do? Keep thinking of minor changes that you can implement within your life to improve yourself little by little. Keep thinking about the things you spend your time doing on a daily basis and at the very least, be conscious of what is helpful and what isn't. Finally, keep thinking about what drives you and how you get fulfillment. These answers will not be found in a day or a week and try to envy others less. Remember that. They may seem ahead of you, but have similarly done no thinking about any of these areas. Make sure you keep thinking and keep learning. Keep writing your thoughts down and soon enough, success will come.